Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is Peter Jennings. I go by CSU Ram 88 across the daily fantasy industry, and I'm back again doing another model preview, this time for the Memorial Tournament here at Fantasy Labs. An interesting week. We have uh, all the studs in the field, the big three, McElroy, Day, and Spieth, as well as other world-class golfers like Dustin Johnson, Bubba Watson, Ricky Fowler, Matt Kuchar. I mean, it's a great field this week and should be a lot of fun for DFS, especially in tournaments. DraftKings has done a great job. Uh, with a lot of nice tournaments to play. So hope this helps you guys. Uh, I made a model that's a, a little bit different than normal. Uh, kind of a trickier tournament. Some tournaments I really know are bomber courses. Some are really accuracy driven. Uh, there's a couple things here in play we talked about on the podcast. Basically, from what I can tell, it's really important to have guys who score well on par five. So that does favor the bombers. But, uh, you know, Colin talked about how driving accuracy is really important as well. So I, I'm taking the approach of just trying to find the best golfers uh, who might look really nice with long-term adjusted round weighted pretty heavily, uh, in addition to some other things that I normally do. So let, let's take a look at the sliders. I have long-term adjusted round at 32. I have long-term green regulation at two. I normally don't have this too high. I had a little bit higher last week. Uh, I would be fine moving this to zero. I just kept it in here just to kind of capture uh, some green regulation, guys, because that is a, a key stat here this week. Uh, long-term driving distance, I have at two. Long-term driving accuracy, I have at two. So I I, I weighted both of those in the model. I think just a small bit just to see uh, bump up the guys who hit it a little bit farther and, and the guys who hit it accurately as well. Um, and then scrolling down, I also added long-term eagle in at two, uh, which I think is interesting because I want to find the guys who uh, actually might make more eagles on these par fives. Uh, when I was looking at the course, it looks like uh, based on uh, last year's metrics or, or some metric uh, on the memorial site itself, they ranked the holes and the four easiest were all the par fives, which is not surprising, uh, especially for PGA professionals. So scrolling down here, didn't really wait anything else. I did rate recent adjusted round at five. Sometimes I do zero, sometimes I put it in. Uh, it does matter current form. Where I really capture current form and always is weighted really heavily for me every week, pretty much regardless, and some weeks more, than, more so than others, is recent green regulation score. I think this is the best way to capture someone's current form and take out the noise of putting and the randomness and the luckiness of putting. So obviously we know putting is important, but uh, you know just recent adjusted round, you know some guy might be actually out of form and just getting lucky, uh, you know hitting a lot of putts, getting some amazing scrambling up and downs, whereas. On the other side of the coin, someone might be getting unlucky, hitting a lot of greens and just three putting uh, uncharacteristically. So I think um, it's really important to to weight recent green regulation score, and I do so every week. That and adjusted round, long-term adjusted round, are two big factors in my model every week. And the one nice thing we have here at Fantasy Labs is that proves to backtest out well to give players a positive expectation. So I have driving distance at two, and then I rated accuracy more here in recent. So I wanted to find the guys uh, who are also hitting a lot of fairways recently uh, that their their driving's in form. So I did weight that a little more heavily uh, than than long term driving accuracy. Uh, not sure if that's exactly right, but that's what I did in this model. And uh, I do it makes sense in my head that you want to find the guys who are, are have been accurate recently and give them a slight bump. Uh, just going a little bit farther down, I have recent eagle score also at two points. So I did put an emphasis on eagles uh, within this model. Uh, not a huge one, but just a small bit uh, with the par 5 scoring being so easy. And then I have 11 points for the course adjusted score. Uh, I go as high as 20 on that sometimes, depending on the course. This specific one, Colin talked about how I didn't think it was as important. I still think there's value in it, uh, but not as much as uh, other weeks. So here's the deal. Uh, when we look at the, the names here, I know we all know to play a lot of these guys. McElroy, Day, Spieth, they're all near the top of the model as well as guys like Ricky Fowler, Bubba Watson, Matt Kuchar, uh, all relatively easy plays. Um, or at least you can justify making a lot of those plays for whatever reason, especially in tournaments. Uh, but some names that stand out to me, uh, especially in this top bit, that aren't just obvious, uh, and again, there's a lot of opportunity costs for these guys who are very expensive, but Paul Casey seems like just a, a really great play to me this week. I think I'm going to have a lot of exposure to him. Hits the ball relatively far, hits the ball relatively accurate, hits a, a ton of greens, especially in long-term form. Then if we look at even his recent form, I mean, he's been driving the ball a little less accurately, but he's still driving it a great distance, hitting a lot of greens, has a great adjusted round, uh, hasn't made as many eagles. Uh, you notice that I ranked eagles and Rory comes up number one, uh, which makes me think, uh, by the way, that Rory is probably the best tournament play out of the big three. I do think if I had to pick one to have the best finish, it's Day. I think Day is definitely the number one player in the world. But uh, Rory is right there, and um, when he gets hot, he's as good as anybody. And uh, I think 
you know, the par five scoring, he can really eat those up, as can Day and Spieth. But uh, I think that Rory has just even a little bit more upside and hopefully a little bit lower ownership uh, than Day and Spieth. Um, so I was talking about Casey and just scrolling through the stats and everything looks good. Uh, I really like what I'm seeing from him. Um, you know, he's he's a, a great player. So um, 8,800 seems like a steal for me. Uh, he has a lot of pro trends, which I love to see. And uh, he's he's cheaper than, than these other guys who I like as well. Um, Day talked about him just now. I think he's an elite player. I think he's the number one player in the field. Uh, he has 15 pro trends. Right now, uh, my money's on Day as the best golfer in the world every time he, he tees it up, essentially. So... Uh, no reason that's going to change this week. I do think he'll be the most heavily owned of the big three because I think the consensus is right now that Day is the best golfer, but uh, who knows. Kuchar, uh, 9,900, uh, great play. He's an awesome cash game play. Probably not going to have much of him in tournaments. I think a lot of people will be on him for his course history. So if we go over to the uh, course form, you can see a great adjusted round of 67.5 for Kuchar, which uh, he's had great great finishes here. So I think a lot of people are going to are gonna go to him. Uh, I think he's a cash game play only for me, really, uh, just because he's such a great cut maker. And again, the stat they show all the time uh, on the golf channels, he has more top 10s than anyone since 2010. And that's not exactly a fair stat because some of the best players in the world, like Spieth, Rory, uh, you know, they weren't playing uh, or weren't playing as much then, uh, especially Spieth definitely wasn't playing then. So um, it's, it's skewed, but he still has more top 10s than anyone since 2010. So definitely a great cash game play. Same thing with Jason Duffner. I like him for cash. Played him last week. Did really well. Like where his game's at. Um, the one thing that you don't love about uh, Duffner is just his upside isn't quite the same as some of these other guys, I would say. And maybe that's not fair. Uh, but I certainly um, think of him more as a cash game type play. Uh, I like Bubba Watson a good, a good bit. And same with Ricky uh, as tournament plays. So that's kind of the top tier. All the top guys are ranking really well. But then we have my favorite stretch of golfers in the, the 7K range. Love a lot of guys all throughout it. Cabrera Bale, I'll definitely use in tournaments. He's getting a really high mark because he hits a ton of greens. Uh, I think he's a pretty good play. Uh, not one of my favorites, but a definitely solid 7,900. Love Russell Knox. I think he's just constantly underrated. This is a guy who's one of the best ball strikers in the world. Uh, and if you if you listen to these pods or model previews, you know I'm all about Russell Knox. So maybe that's a, a little biased, but I, I, I'm a huge fan of his, and I think he's a, a good play again this week. Emiliano Grillo, yeah, another up-and-coming stud. Very accurate, as you can see here, 69% accuracy long-term. Uh, you know, you look at his driving accuracy in recent form, it's great as well. So he fits the mold for, for what I'm looking at. Has plenty of distance, too. He's not a really short hitter like a Luke Donald or something. So I like him. Love Francisco Molinari. Robert Streb, I'm going to be playing in tournaments. He hasn't really been himself for a good stretch now and has been an auto fade in a lot of tournaments, but did make the cut last week and has great course history here. Uh, so when I'm taking flyers on some of these tournament guys, um, like a Streb, uh, I want to take him where he might, there, something might else, something else might impact him and make him a little bit more comfortable so he can gain some confidence. And I think the course history could definitely be it here if you look at it, uh, 68.6 adjusted round. Amazing adjusted round for Francisco Molinari, but it's only one count, so keep that in mind. Uh, DJ, great tournament play. Brendan Steele, uh, Colin talked about as a play for him. Uh, Kevin Chappell, I want to point out. I think he's an elite tournament play. I played him in the Thunderdome last week, which was a mistake. Um, not a mistake, but I, I think that there's some, some plays that I could have chosen him with his tee time. I probably should have been off him. Uh, but huge discount goes from 9,700 to 7,500. You look at his game log, obviously missed the cut last week by one stroke with a 74 on Friday, which is super tilting. But before that, you know, you're looking at a second, missed cut, ninth, fourth, 41st, second. So huge stretch of uh, some great performances with a couple near wins. Uh, I definitely think he's a great value at 7,500. Jim Furyk, uh, polarizing one for me, coming off the wrist injury. Uh, again, a guy who has great course form here. And uh, sorry for my terrible scrolling right there on the on the Mac, but... Uh, I do love Jim Furyk uh, as a tournament play, even though traditionally he's been a guy who just makes a ton of pars. But this price, uh, him making the cut and even trying to contend, maybe maybe this is the week it clicks. I mean, he's starting to play more. Uh, I believe he had a good round. Yeah, he had a good round um, on Saturday. It wasn't quite enough to make it at the Dean and DeLuca, but a good round is encouraging. And if you look at his course form here, again, a guy who's played extremely well uh, at this tournament. So like him quite a bit. Uh, and then there's other guys like Danny Lee, don't mind him, like Jamie Lovemark, uh, Lingmurth won here last year, so I probably won't have too much of him, 
Schwartzel, nice price at 8K. Ches Reeve, Summer Hayes, Reed. I mean, it's nice because there's so many intriguing plays this week. Uh, and as you get down here, you can find whatever narratives that you like to, to like these guys. Uh, in this specific model, some of them rank low. If you adjust the models, which I highly recommend doing, uh, you'll see some of these other guys pop. So hope this helps you guys. And just hit on one of my other big points I really want to emphasize. This is just one model uh, that I made to look at players and to see who pops. My routine on a Wednesday night is to make a lot of models with the different stats that I think are important and weight them differently and see who's popping and uh, come up with an angle that I really want to kind of use for the, for the week. So uh, I think it's really important to make multiple models here at Fantasy Labs, and uh, I think you'll see a lot of different things, and I think certain players might catch your eye when you when you do specific models. So hope this is helpful. Good luck in the Memorial Tournament this week, and of course, uh, hope to see more Fantasy Lab subscribers at the top of the leaderboard.